I think I've always been drawn to the notion of talk as cinematic. Noah Baumbach has been directing for over 25 years, and since then has established his style as both a writer and a director, being nominated for everything from the Palme d'Or to the Golden Lion. He has also worked with many respected cinematographers, including Robert Yeoman, Sam Levy, and Robbie Ryan. Today I'm going to talk about Marriage Story, Francis Ha, The Meriwet Stories, as well as The Squid and the Whale. However, I won't be talking about his less popular films, otherwise this video would have been too long, but if you would like to see a video essay on them, leave a comment down below. I'll go over the history behind Noah Baumbach, how he shoots a scene, and what equipment he and his cinematographers use to create the unique look for each film. In 1995, Baumbach released his debut feature, Kicking and Screaming, which premiered at the New York Film Festival. Then in 1997, he wrote and directed Mr. Jealousy, a film about a young writer who sneaks into group therapy sessions. Then, under the names Jesse Carter and Danny Fusco, he co-wrote and directed Highball, again released in 1997. Then in 2004, he co-wrote The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, with Wes Anderson. The next year, eight years after the release of his last film, Baumbach released The Squid and the Whale, a semi-autobiographical piece about his childhood in Brooklyn and the effect that his parents' divorce had on him and his family in the mid-1980s. Whilst it didn't do well at the box office, it was a critical hit, earning him two awards at Sundance, six Independent Spirit Award nominations and three Golden Globe nominations, as well as an Academy Award nomination for Best Original Screenplay. A year later, and he was making Margot at the Wedding, which was released in 2007. Then in 2009, he also helped Wes Anderson co-write Fantastic Mr. Fox. It was his 2010 film, Greenberg, that earned him his nomination for The Golden Bear at the 60th Berlin International Film Festival. The 2010s really allowed Baumbach to shine as a director, with Francis Ha, While We Young, Mistress America, The Merit Stories, Marriage Story, and the documentary De Palma. He co-wrote Francis Ha with Greta Gerwig, who is now an acclaimed writer-director, and I have a video breaking down the cinematography of her first film Lady Bird, which I will link below and in the top right corner. The film played at the Toronto International Film Festival, and Gerwig received a Golden Globe nomination for her performance. 2014's While We're Young was Baumbach's most successful picture financially, grossing more than all of his previous films in the domestic box office. Then back to writing with Greta Gerwig, he made the 2015 film Mistress America, premiering at the Sundance Film Festival. In 2017, Baumbach made his first film of Netflix, The Merowit Stories. It was selected to compete for the prestigious Palme d'Or at the 2017 Cannes Film Festival. Unfortunately, he didn't win, but the film was a critical success. Marriage Story marks his most successful film to date. It premiered at the Venice Film Festival to great acclaim before releasing on Netflix later that year. Many critics ranked it among his best work and the film received six Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture and Best Original Screenplay, with both Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson receiving nominations. And the film didn't walk away empty-handed, as Laura Dern won for Best Supporting Actress. Noah Baumbach has worked with a number of cinematographers, and whilst his style hasn't really changed, other things have, so I'll be going over each film individually, but still go into depth about the cinematography behind them. Acclaimed cinematographer Robert Yeoman worked with Baumbach on The Squid and the Whale. Baumbach wanted Yeoman to photograph the film in a much grittier way than usual, as he is used to, for example, on Wes Anderson's projects. Shooting the entire project on Super 16 was both a budgetary reason, but also because it's a great way to shoot handheld with almost every shot being so. As the film was only shot in 23 days, they worked fast, and Yeoman had almost no additional lighting when it came to exteriors. There are many memorable scenes throughout the film, but the one that stands out is definitely where we see Jesse Eisenberg's character, Walt, at the American Museum of Natural History, staring at both the blue whale and the giant squid. We see him covered in a blue light, representing both the ocean, but also his isolation from his family. Moving on to Francis Ha, we have a very different feeling in both the story, but also the cinematography. Sam Levy was chosen for the project, this being his first of three collaborations so far with Baumbach. They opted to use Canon's 5D Mark II, a peculiar option for such a film, but I'll get more into that later. Levy had significant prep time, allowing him to study light and test on one of the principal sets. He also used the time to test how the 5D works with the different textures, fabrics and lamps. Levy said that Noah's sense of blocking is impeccable when talking about the compositions and how a scene should be shot, trying to shoot each scene in as few shots as possible, and with some scenes even trying to get them all into one shot, but in a rather dynamic way. 
Today, shooting in black and white is a luxury, and Levy said that the entire experience was fantastic, like living in a dream, and hopes that he will be able to do it again. It allows you to focus on the architecture of the shot, the shapes, and the different tones of silvery greys, ultimately making the movie timeless. There are too many incredible shots to count, but the scenes in Paris are the ones that stand out to me. Like I mentioned before, the architecture plays a huge part in the cinematography, and the fact that Paris is such a beautiful city already really helps to make the frame so special. For example, even this simple shot of Frances walking down the path with trees either side of her shows her isolation in even a foreign country. The same can be applied to when she looks out of the window of the Paris apartment. Again, a very different film, but at the same time unique. The Merit Stories was Barnbuck's first collaboration with the cinematographer Robbie Ryan, and he went straight back to shooting on film, specifically 16mm. Barnbuck said that shooting on film has an emotional effect on him, and after shooting on digital, he never wants to go back to it. Much like his other films, The Merit Stories has a very natural feeling to it, with the handheld, which is much easier when using 16mm, to the inviting colours all makes for a very warming feeling. In an interview about Marriage Story, Robbie Ryan said that a big influence on Noah is Ingmar Bergman's 1966 film Persona, and they try to incorporate the layering of the faces over and over again as much as possible. When it comes to scenes that stand out, a definite one is that where the brothers destroy a car. We never go handheld in the scene, yet the dynamic camera movements make for a chaotic scene nonetheless. There are a lot of subtle zooms on the characters, and a lot of fast pans and tilts to show the characters hitting the cars with sticks and rocks and anything that they can get their hands on. Paired with the Randy Newman's piano in the background makes for both an intense, yet moderate scene. Again working with Ryan, Barnbach decided to shoot Marriage Story on 35mm, which Ryan was thrilled about. As they had worked together on the previous film, Ryan already knew the style that Barnbach was going for. With the motivated camera and use of a dolly, which is difficult when the majority of your film takes place in a court or an apartment, they again opted for the approach of shooting the film in a natural way, using motivated lighting. Much like the Marowitz stories, they used Persona as an influence as Barnbach was very keen on the compositional use of faces. They also took reference from Mike Nichols' carnal knowledge for their use of spotlight to reveal a character, and again Ingmar Bergman for his film Cries and Whispers for its use of atmospheric natural light. The most memorable scene in the film is probably that where Charlie and Nicole have their big fight in his new apartment. For the first minute, we stay in medium close-ups until they are fully screaming at each other, where we then have close-ups on both characters. The use of centre framing and close-ups all add to the intensity of the scene. We are also never fully handheld. There are tilts and pans that keep the characters in frame, but this scene is all about the performances, and Ryan captures them in an incredible way. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> On the Squid and the Whale, Ewan opted to use the Ariflex 16 SR3 with the Zeiss Super Speed lenses. The Super Speeds offer vintage characteristics, a fast aperture, and compact size. They also chose to shoot on Super 16, both for budgetary reasons, but also because it allows you to follow people handheld on location without being noticed. They also use Kodak's Vision 2 500T and Vision 250D. 500T offers low contrast, low colour film, with soft yet smooth skin tones as well as having incredible shadow detail. Likewise, 250D has outstanding skin tones and colour reproduction, whilst also having the technical advantage over other film stocks. When it came to Francis Ha, Barnbach and Levy settled on the Canon 5D Mark II with L-series glass, with the majority of the film being shot on the 50mm Prime and 70-200, and rarely their 35 and 85mm. They did have the opportunity to shoot on film, as well as the Alexa and on RED, but they found themselves going back to the 5D as it was the best format for the project. Levy said that it reminds him of a 35mm stock from a 16mm negative especially in the midtones, as the grain was in fact video noise that resembled it. Barnbach went back to shooting on 16mm for the Merowitz stories. This was also his first collaboration with the cinematographer Robbie Ryan. They used the Ariflex 416 with Canon's 11-165 zoom lens. As for the film stock, they used Kodak's Vision 3 200T and 500T. 200T offers fine grain structure and allows you to work in high contrast outdoor situations, whilst 500T has outstanding skin tones and colour reproduction, as well as having reduced grain in the shadows. Again, Bombach worked with Ryan on Marriage Story, his most acclaimed film yet. They used a range of cameras from ARRI, including the ARRICAM LT, ARRICAM ST and ARRIFLEX 435, which they then paired with Panavision's Primo lenses. The Primos offer high contrast and resolution, but keep ghosting the distortion to a minimum, 
like Meribut stories, Ryan used Kodak's 200T and 500T. For Bombok, it doesn't matter what camera, film stock or lens that you use, as long as the final cut is perfect. Do not compare me to my father! I didn't compare you to him, I said you were acting like him. You're exactly like your mother. Everything you're complaining about her, you're doing. You're suffocating Henry. Overall, Barnbach has a very natural feeling to all of his films. Whether it's the colours, movement and of course dialogue, each film shares something in common. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of how Noah Barnbach shoots a scene. If you'd like to see me break down a specific director or film, leave a comment down below. If you found this video helpful, a thumbs up is appreciated. And if you want to see more videos like this, click the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.